Generating any kind of income right now is tough. Hey, it's David Hollander, president and founder of Liberty Group LLC and host of Protect Your Assets radio show and podcast. Interest rates right now are so low that people are putting all their money into stocks trying to get dividends and some growth. It doesn't have to be that way. Right now, there is an alternative asset class in energy, which can be non-correlated to the stock market and provide some good income opportunities. Find out more about this by visiting the Liberty Group, either at their website, libertygroupllc.com, or give us a call anytime you like, particularly after your race. 866-PROTECT is the number. Again, 866 866- 776-8328. Remember the number 866-PROTECT. It's easy. Go ahead and give my team a call and we'll see you on the racetrack. The intensity of Watkins Glen is now in the rearview mirror. It was Andre Castro who took the win in the New York Hills. And it is time to go racing at one of the shorter circuits on the iRacing service. Welcome to Virtual Lime Rock Park and welcome to the Real Racers Virtual Club live on Race Spot TV. Happy that all of you are along for the ride with us here tonight on this beautiful Tuesday evening. My name is Joshua Lee. I'm joined by Arjuna Konkipati, who is also down in the production seat, giving you all of the wonderful views from inside the sim tonight. And Arjuna, it was an exciting round at Watkins Glen. A lot of different position changes, and we have that now in the past, and we move over to Lime Rock Park. I can't think of two more different circuits than Watkins Glen and Lime Rock, especially when it comes to these Indy Pro 2000 cars. One thing we know for sure, Josh, there's not going to be three wide action today. They're going to try, don't get me wrong, but it's tight, it's twisty, full of elevation changes as well. And despite its, uh, what do you want to call it? Uh, history in iRacing is very much a track which encourages and welcomes people to the iRacing service. It's one that's ready to bite, especially in a car that can be as fast as this Indy Pro 2000. Yeah, and as they hit the track for a little bit of practice here, it's very, very clear that it is a very tough racetrack. A lot of drivers continuing to struggle around this track. And Watkins Glen is another one of those tracks that is a bit of a sleeper tough track. Watkins Glen seems normal until you hit the track and you realize, wait, there's some tough corners to this track. Same thing with Lime Rock Park. You mentioned it. It's one of the staples of the rookie Mazda series. And right now, these drivers are getting ready to take to the grid or take to qualifying, excuse me here at virtual lime rock here's where they stand in the point standings heading into tonight now only one round is factored into these point standings right now these are the exact way they finished at the checkered flag of last week andre castro anders crone peter dempsey max butler and wade michael the top five Arjuna, I think notable names that are in the top 10, Cabot Bigham, Stefan Wilson, but they've got a long way to catch Andre Castro and Andrews Crow at the front, who, especially Andre Castro, a three-point difference than the driver who finished in P2 one week ago. And last week we saw 20-plus drivers competing. Today we've only got 13. It's a much smaller field, and that's typically what we see over the course of these seasons. People come and go with real-world commitments. Remember, these are drivers in the real-world motorsports community, professional drivers, amateur drivers, who come together to hone their craft, to come together as a community, build their relationships up further, and it does mean for Andre Castro an opportunity to extend the gap to someone like Anders Krohn, but at this track, it is not simple. That is an understatement. It might be a smaller field. Only 13 drivers are taking the track for qualifying here in about six and a half minutes, but it is some very, very notable names and some very fast drivers when it comes to the iRacing service. You talk about fast. Let's talk about the lap times around the Lime Rock Park, Arjuna. 47.363 is currently the fastest time. Josh Green with a 47.482. Andre Castro, 47.632. What times we have being being laid down here on this track seems like these small cars that have a little bit more grip with a little bit less power seem to really do well around this course and they're running some very very fast lap times one thing to remember as well with 
a, a small uh, short lap like this where the times are so quick. If you have a tenth of a second here, it is very different when you compare it to somewhere like Road America, almost five miles in length. A tenth of a second there, not as big a deal as a tenth of a second here. So the tenth of a second that Simon Sykes currently has over someone like Josh Green, even more significant. I'm loving, though, basically from fourth on back, Josh, it's thousands, not tenths, not sometimes it's hundreds, yes, but it's thousands that separate some of these drivers. And you can see as they continue to run here in practice, all this practice time is being very valuable to these drivers. I believe we're taking a look at right here. Matthew Escajeta currently has run 35 laps. Now going to make it 36 here in practice just to prepare for the race here tonight. And you can see just the elevation change that Lime Rock Park has, Arjuna. They go downhill into that final corner as we take a look at a practice start, a bit of a pit party here. As they go down the front straightaway, they kind of just get slingshotted from that downhill section. And then another big braking zone normally here of turn number one, but with these lower powered Indy Pro 2000 cars, they are able to take it a little bit quicker, not hit the brakes as much. And I think we're going to see what we're seeing right here a lot throughout the beginning of this race, more so like pack racing. Everybody's staying very, very close together using that slipstream, which can prove to be helpful, especially coming up the hill here and down the front straightaway. You'll notice we're using the chicane. Now there is a very treacherous right-hand sweeper where you almost launch the car into the air if you don't use that chicane layout. The chicane used by the likes of the IMSA WeatherTech Sports Car Championship, but today it's the chicane layout, not the big uphill sweeper that really can challenge and throw you into the air. It's an extra passing opportunity, but it's a place where if you want to get the pass done, you have to be careful. You'll notice as well, turns one, two, and, and even three, Somewhat cambered in, but not much elevation change. The elevation change really is in the second half of the lap here. You can take a look as they're running multiple, multiple laps. They're still in this pack. They have not gone away. And you can see everybody just getting those valuable practice times in. Now, three minutes, 50 seconds remaining here in practice. And as we have 13 drivers on the grid, you mentioned earlier, Arjuna, how real-world commitments can take a lot of the drivers out of this race. That is because the drivers in this field oh. race, as we see a big moment down the front straightaway with the six machine getting spun around. That was Max Butler making contact with the guardrail. But the Real Racers Virtual Club is composed of drivers that race real life race cars on real life racetracks and are using the virtual world of iRacing to just sort of improve their skills and hone their talent when it comes to real world racing. So each and every one of these drivers is a real world competitor, whether it's in open wheel cars or in any form of racing under the sun. You also then have people who are uh you know, one of the uh, one of our partners, CoForce, who puts helps us to put on these broadcasts. They're a media agency. We've got some crack ace photographers who travel around uh, the motorsports world and take some fantastic video, some fantastic media for the drivers to be able to use. It's a really eclectic group of drivers, and that's one of the things that I love about iRacing, Josh, is that. You can't do something like this in the real world. Cost is sometimes a, a limiting factor, but here you can get drivers who compete in the Indy 500, for example. You can get drivers that race around their local track communities, SCCA sort of things, and up and coming drivers. Simon Sykes, for example, who is currently sitting at the top of these provisional practice times. He is an Indy uh, USF 2000 driver. Uh, we got someone like uh, Josh Green, who is going to be racing this car in the road to Indy next year as well. Love the grid that we have here. Wrecking one of these race cars might cost you a bit of laps on the racetrack, but it definitely will not cost you thousands. That is for sure. M less than two minutes now remaining here in practice and qualifying proved to be very important at Watkins Glen Arjuna when you, th when you look back to one week ago because Andre Castro, who qualified on the pole, had the fastest lap of the race as well, went on to win the race at Watkins Glen. So qualifying is going to be doubly important as we see more carnage as the clock continues to wind down here in practice. Yeah, new, new damage model getting a bit of a workout here. Uh, it's really great seeing the debris flying around, the, the tires going for a bit of a ride as well. I think qualifying is going to be important, but not in the same way that we saw at Watkins Glen. In Watkins Glen, I think it's fair to say Andre Castro not really challenged after plenty of 
incidents and chaos on lap number one. He kind of sped away from the entirety of the field. The rest of the pack had a great fight going on. I really think, though, we're not going to see the big breakaway here. I think the draft, especially down all the way through the penultimate corner into turn one, will keep things close. We'll see how close the racing is going to be. We saw in Watkins Glen, the racing was fairly close, and then they started to spread out towards the middle of the race. We still had some great battling, but will we see some full field battling here this afternoon? We would like to thank a couple of the sponsors that helped put on Real Racers Virtual Club live on Racebot TV, starting with Liberty Group. At Liberty Group, every we believe everyone should be able to live the retirement they've always wanted our team of professionals can help you create a well thought out strategy using a variety of investments and insurance products and services to help you address your financial needs and concerns another one of the sponsors of tonight's event is coforce also the stefan wilson racing academy they assist clients on their motorsport journey. SWRA utilizes 20 plus years in the sport with advanced coaching techniques, track and car knowledge, and widespread international industry connections to help clients progress at, at, to any level imaginable. And it is run by Stefan Wilson, who founded the Stefan Wilson Racing Academy. And we would also like to thank CoForce for their support of Real Racers Virtual Club. CoForce is a digital media marketing agency specializing in the world of motorsports. Working in a variety of racing series in North America, CoForce offers a full range of services, from video production and targeted branding campaigns, to event planning and special projects. For more information, visit www.coforce.com or find them at a race event near you. The cars are back on track. It is time for qualifying for the Real Racers Virtual Club. We're glad all of you could join us here on Race Spot TV tonight. Joshua Lee here with you in the booth. Alongside me is Arjuna Konkipati and Arjuna looking at qualifying now. Open qualifying once again. Ten minutes on the clock. We have a one minute down now. And these drivers can utilize that slipstream to their advantage when it comes to this qualifying session. Something that if we had single car, everybody would be on the track for themselves. But that slipstream could prove to put somebody at the top top of the board it could mean the difference between pole position and starting in the mid pack you also want to time it up correctly you want to be laying back far enough coming out of the final corner to cross the start finish line to take advantage of the toe but if you're faster than the car in front of you you don't want to catch him before you reach the final corner once more to complete the qualifying lap so really timing it up is going to be crucial and a reminder as wade michael will lose the rear end coming down out of that final corner uh, lap times beginning to come in when the checkered flag flies, drivers are allowed to complete the lap they are on. So it is not going to be, qualifying's not done when the checkered flag flies. Like we see in real world competition, you get to finish the lap that you're on. And we'll see who is going to walk away with the pole. Josh Green currently holds the fastest lap behind the wheel of the number two machine. Zach Hudson sits in P number two with J Jeremy Clark, Joe Butler, and make that Andre Castro, the winner from one round ago, just moved up into P number two. Josh Green gonna come across the start finish line this time by. He's gonna start another lap here at Lime Rock Park. Is that one going to improve on his pole time? Yes, it is. 47.720. He's gonna jump a few tenths on second place. Andre Castro. But here comes Jackson Ball. Here comes Nikita Lestachkin. Up and into second and third. Add Joe Butler to the mix as he goes to P4. We still wait for Simon Sykes, who is fastest in practice, to put down a lap time until Jackson Ball went second on the board. It was seven tenths that separated first through to second. So the times are starting to come down. The question I'm starting to wonder is how did the tires build up over the run? You are allowed to come back to pit lane, whether it be through the toe, whether it be something else, uh, uh, rolling yourself onto lane, get some fresh tires. How do you want to play that uh, strategy on the pit lane? Andre Castro has gone to first. 
The winner from one week ago is fastest, not anymore, as Josh Green is going to take that pole position back and with a 47.587 lap times continue to get faster and Andre Castro is showing is going to need to get back up from se second place. Jeremy Clark just got jumped by Joe Butler. Clark's going to grab that spot back for P6. How about the other Butler? M Joe Butler going to move his way into P7. There's the fastest driver from practice. Simon Sykes across the line and he's going to be fastest in qualifying for the moment as the number three machine is going to move up to provisional pole and with about five and a half minutes remaining here, Arjuna, Simon Sykes back up to the top. How many more laps is he going to run? He has a bit of a slipstream from the driver in front of him. Let's see if this is going to affect his lap time. And I think the thing with the top three right now, six hundredths of a second. That's all that separates these three drivers. Castro, the winner, uh, seven days ago, has some pressure on his shoulders, if you ask me, to try and back up that victory. A dominant victory for him as well. We'll see exactly how things are going to go for him as he comes across the line to start a lap. Let's ride on board with Simon Sykes around the one and a half mile Lime Rock Park, heading down into the Big Bend corner. A couple of different lines you can take here. Swing out wide, keep it tight to the inside. Sykes looking comfortable, but onto the grass. That's going to end this onboard lap. And, well, he's going to have to take the toe back to pit lane and reset and recommit to a qualifying lap. We're talking about earlier how it doesn't cost thousands to wreck one of these virtual race cars. Simon Sykes is very lucky that is not the case because he would have also had to have had a bit of issues getting a car onto the grid for the race he'll be able to grid up just fine and right now he's set to grid up from p number one as here comes andre castro through the final corner is he going to improve the eight one hundredth of a second that he is going to need across the line 47.463 and he is not going to get it he's going to improve by about two one hundredths but simon sykes still holds the top spot look at nikita lastochkin here the number five machine hooked up to the back bumper of i believe that is the 11 machine of matthew escajeta in front of him it is not and it looks like they are going to swap positions nikita lastochkin the car behind him looks actually to be the seven of wade michael that he just swapped positions with but Lestochkin in p4 needs to find a bit more time and he did just get by the slipstream as we have a driver wrecking in front here in qualifying luckily it is open qualifying drivers can tow it back they can take as many laps as they want on this course but Arjuna time's running out they need to make sure they have started a lap before the clock hits 47 seconds so they can finish that lap it looks like Andre Castro is going slow. Maybe cool his tires. Maybe come back down to pit lane to get some fresh tires. Going back to what I said earlier, I really do think you need to have those tires up to temperature and pressure. Who's that taking a shortcut through the grass? Oh, Matthew Escajeda's gone all, it's gone all, uh, all wrong for him, and he's not even put a qualifying lap time now. He's running out of time to put himself onto the board. Unfortunate for Escajeda there as well as he is sitting P13 right now with no time on the board. He is still yet to get across the line for a successful clean lap. And a successful lap, of course, means you finish the lap. A clean lap means that you do not have any 0Xs, 1Xs, 2Xs, or 4Xs on this course. Because if you do that in the irising service, your time is disallowed. So one of those differences when it comes to real world versus virtual world, Arjuna, because these drivers need to be careful. They're not worried about hitting the grass because they might wreck their race car. They're more worried about getting that incident point that then disqualifies the lap that they're currently on especially if it is one one lap that could be contending for a pole position absolutely that's a very valid point I, I <laughs> you see at other tracks sometimes the street circuits that you go to if you graze the wall get that's a zero x so wouldn't even count as an incident in the race but invalidates your lap time it's something you really do have to be thinking about and, and always present when you're rolling yourself around a lap like this two minutes left on the boards maximum that these drivers will be able to do is three laps left in this session Coming across the line, once again, goes the two machine of Josh Green. Is it enough to get the pole position back? A 47.4, or 0.567. He will not improve on his best lap time of 47.471. The 47.397 still holds best 
for Simon Sykes, who currently sits at the top of the board. Move Zach Hudson back into the top 10. He goes to P number eight. Simon Sykes running a 48.568 last time by. He'll start another flying lap here. He's got help, but, but not anymore as the 07, I believe that was a Jackson Ball just going off the racetrack. Actually, that was a 77 of Andre Castro, winner from Watkins Glen, taking a trip through the grass there in the three machine of Simon Sykes is going to spin it out coming through the right hander at turn four onto the no-name straight. Yeah, that's not ideal, but now with the pressure really on lap times, time ticking away, the opportunity to put lap times down really coming down bit by bit. Still the top three only separated by seven thousandths of a sec, seven hundredths of a second, excuse me. The 12 cars separated by eight tenths of a second. I think we're going to see a race where multiple packs start to break up here and potentially even lap traffic play a, a big, big factor here, Josh. Well, 30 seconds left on the clock. You'll see a check checkered flag come up, but everybody that is currently on a flying lap will be able to get that lap completed. We'll see if any other driver is going to attempt to take over that pole position. But Josh Green comes across the line. Not going to be enough. A 47.623. He improved from his last lap time by one thousandth of a se second. But he did not get the game that he needed to walk away with the pole. Here's Andre Castro. Can he keep his pole streak alive? He had the pole at Watkins Glen one week ago. One minute for each of these drivers to get a lap time in. And here comes Andre Castro across the line. Is it going to be enough for the pole? He flies across the finish line. It is not going to be enough. He improves on the time to a 47.457. But it's not going to be the pole position. And we will have a brand new pole sitter for this season, Arjuna. Big question is, who is it going to be? As Josh Green comes across the line, he still can improve. Simon Sykes is looking like he's in a really good position right now to be your second different pole sitter in a row. Yep, I think it's done. We've got Jackson Ball still on a lap. But other than that, everyone is done. There comes Ball across the line for him. 47.817. Uh, excuse me, no, that's his best lap time. Uh, he did a 48.209 across the line. So that's the qualifying order done and dusted. Now I think we're in for a three-car scrap for the lead. We've seen how treacher treacherous this track can be when they're solo uh, on by their own, own in effect qualifying. What will it be, though, when they're now racing in a pack? Let's find out what is going to happen in tonight's race. Before we get to the starting grid, let's take a look at how they'll all line up here from Virtual Lime Rock Park. Diamond Sykes, the Georgian, is going to walk away with the pole position with Andre Castro, native of New York, to his outside. Another New York native in Josh Green starts to the inside over row two with California's Nikita Lestochkin to the outside. Max Butler and Wade Michael are going to be the pair that share row number three. Jackson Ball and Zach Hudson on row four. Rounding out the top ten, it'll be Rick Sheldon and Joe Butler with Nicholas Leo and Jeremy Clark going to round out the top six rows and rounding out the field it is going to be Matthew Escajeda who will start in P13 in the final spot on the grid short pace lap here at Lime Rock Park it will be starting on the back straight and heading through turn six the west bend before going through the downhill section and that I racing pace char will pull into the safety of pit lane Arjuna Andre Castro was batting perfect until he got beat in qualifying. Now, he cannot keep the solid streak that he had with Watkins Glen. He got the win, the fastest lap, and the pole position. Pole position is already gone. Fastest lap and winner up for grabs. What are your thoughts as we go into tonight's race? Do you think Andre Castro can make it two race wins and two fastest laps in a row? Or do you think it's going to be Simon Sykes or Josh Green that end up in victory lane? I will say it's easy to bat 100 when you've only had one race. So don't don't think by any means that Andre, Andre Castro's qualifying streak will be totally in the books. I think he'll come out strong swinging in the next couple of races. I don't know who's going to win this one. I just think we're in for a treat with three cars up at the front in terms of times. Ready to go racing. It's Simon Sykes who will start on the pole. Andre Castro to his outside. 
it's time to go racing from virtual lime rock park and we're glad you're joining us for round number two of real racers virtual club season four the base car is down into the safety of pit lane let's go racing from lime rock Great start at the front. Simon Sykes is going to pull away. Josh Green tries to take a look to the inside. Not going to be able to do anything on Andre Castro. Can he get to it in the apex of turn number two? He can't do it. Nikita Lestochkin stays P4. Max Butler stays P5. Only a couple drivers towards the midfield trading positions. Joe Butler lost two spots off the start. He's down into P12. But the top four who we're focused on now are all still single file and getting very close to contact there for P2. That's oh. Josh Green. One driver going to go around middle of the pack collects another that's jackson ball and rick sheldon who went around i did say that uphill chicane is a bit of a treacherous place to try and make the pass happen but it's it's a passing opportunity these are race car drivers they want to make things happen across the line simon sykes leads nap la leads lap number one Great start for Sykes. Maybe an even better start for Andre Castro to keep Sykes reeled in. Josh Green, Nikita Lestochkin, and Max Butler are your current top five. The top six are unchanged from where they began this race. You're on board with your current leader, Simon Sykes, in the three. And you can see how close Andre Castro is behind him. About one and a half tenths separating these two. Make it two tenths as they go through the chicane. Let's go on board with Josh Green as they race up the hill, off on the back straightaway, and through turn number six, the West Bend, before going downhill through turn seven and completing the lap here at Lime Rock Park. We mentioned it earlier, Arjuna. This is a very, very quick lap. Not a lot of time to do things, but here comes Andre Castro trying not to waste any time as they go side by side down the front straight away into turn number one and Andre Castro is going to walk away with the bleed off of lap number three. Nikita Lashtoshkin is being left behind very slightly eight tenths now between third and fourth position. I said it was going to be a three car breakaway. Andre Castro didn't get the rub of the green in qualifying but he's clearly got the race pace. Already three car lengths between him and second place Simon Sykes as once more they come up through the chicane. Look at how close Josh Green is in this group as well. He sits P3. He's not letting Simon Sykes in second place get away for much longer, but still a long way to go in this race. It's a 25 minute race. We're gonna put about two and a half of that in the rear view mirror, 22 and a half minutes to go. And still a lot of laps to play with as we go on lap number four here. Arjuna, we got a replay up. That was the first lap incident going into the chicane between Rick Sheldon and Jackson Ball. Yeah, look like just a bit of miscommunication in the braking zone on board with rock and rolling Rick Sheldon as you head into that chicane. Ball covers the inside, then breaks kind of early if you ask me there. Sheldon caught a little bit napping and he's the one who initiates the contact. Jackson Ball down to pit road. I believe Rick Sheldon was able to continue and roll his car into pit lane. Rock and roll Rick Sheldon is right. Totes that he's faster on the electric guitar than on the racetrack. Unfortunately, he is currently in the pit lane, but uh, you did mention Arjuna, he is still on the racetrack. He took a small trip into the pit lane, grabbed one of his two fast repairs, and is right back onto the racetrack. Jackson Ball also took a fast repair. He is back onto the racetrack, but unfortunately, he had to take a tow and is currently one lap down. Back to the battle for the lead, Andre Castro currently sits in the top spot as he tries to continue to run away at the front and going for two race wins in a row and we'll see if the driver is able to do it battle for fifth on the right side of your screen now max butler gonna go battling with wade michael i always like when i'm watching a real races virtual club race figuring out which of the butlers looks more comfortable. Max and Joe. Uh, Max is up in fifth. Joe's down in ninth. A couple of seconds down the road. About seven, give or take right now. But these guys are, are always having fun. Butler's coming under pressure from Michael as they come down in turn number one. Max Butler, a usual race photographer. You can find him on the side of racetracks all over the United States. Wade Michaels, about 10 years of karting experience. So one of those unique things about the Real, Real Racers Virtual Club, we're seeing photographers and real life racers go head to head on this course. And as they continue to race up at the front, Simon Sykes has fallen off of leader Andre Castro. He's got a bit of work to do as we go on board with Josh Green, who 
who sits in P number two at the moment and trying to chase down Simon Sykes, who sits in the second spot right now. But Andre Castro Arjuna has pulled away by about three and a half tenths. Simon Sykes has some work to do if he wants to try and contend for this race win like he did in qualifying, getting the pull position unfortunately now he instead of on defense he is on full offense and maybe add a bit of defense in for good measure as well with josh green right on his mirror three drivers on the road to indy like it's great to see them all competing against one another for andre castro won the team usa scholarship in 2021 along with max esterson another driver that we're very familiar here on racebot tv esterson competes with vendaval sim racing andre castro we're becoming familiar with him on these tuesday nights as josh green runs a little bit wide into the grass loses some momentum but still three cars separated by seven tenths of a second you mentioned Road to Indy drivers. Simon Sykes, of course, a competitor in the Co Cooper Tires USF 2000 Championship. Great to see him in real racers virtual club action. He sits P2, but don't count out Josh Green. He was another one of those drivers, Arjuna, that when we went to Watkins Glen, it was just sort of always at the front. He didn't really go down in the order. He was always at the front, and he has just made a move on Simon Sykes and is able to get up into second place. Gotta say, very impressed by Josh Green, but can he put it all together to get a race win? Because he was, again, one of the most consistent drivers when it came to Watkins Glen. We saw him up front the entire race. Can he continue it into Lime Rock Park? He's doing a great job right now, but he has still five tenths to work out to try and catch up to Andre Castro. You can't give Andre Castro a sniff of an opportunity here to break away, release himself from the draft, and put in the lap times that we saw from him in Watkins Glen. Anders Krohn has been one of the staples of this series, and he was ultra fast but just not able to reel in castro seven days ago castro wants that same situation to break away to be in control of his destiny up the hill they come seven tenths between first and second and speaking of josh green finished sixth in his rookie season of the cooper tires usf 2000 championship campaign in 2020 with three podiums and 12 top 10 finishes if anybody knows this car like the back of his hand it has got to be josh green who sits in second but you mentioned not wanting to give andre castro anything and andre castro is currently in the lead now by six tenths as they continue to race through here at lime rock park we have put just about eight minutes behind us and still a long way to go with 17 and a half minutes crossing over the clock we take a look at a virtual club replay here and it looks like the six machine getting a little bit loose coming through the big bend that's max but butler we'll take another look at another angle of this replay it looks like just lost it coming through the middle of the corner took a little bit of a trip through the grass a bit of an impromptu lawnmower with that usf 2000 machine but gets it back on the racetrack and the number six machine is able to continue in p6 on the racetrack across the line arjuna and continuing to watch these top three competitors reeling in andre castro is both green and sykes as they go through out of turn number one yeah, no, and the gaps come down, right? We thought Castro might have stretched his legs slightly. Not the case. He's being reeled back in. Oh, look at these two side by side once more. Michael on the inside. Butler trying to go the long way around, and he'll go off into the grass. The number six machine, two laps in a row, having issues coming out of turn number two. This time a little bit worse than the first, as he's going to fall two positions down into P number eight on the racetrack. We go back up to the battle for the top spot as Andre Castro continues in the lead. Josh Green in second. Simon Sykes sits in third. Arjuna take us through a lap of Lime Rock Park once again. He didn't have an opportunity to really do it in full in qualifying. Let's see if anything happens to Sykes here. Watch the understeer through turn one as he tries to get it turned in, clip a bit of the curb to minimize the distance you enter through. The S is Big Ben and the S is somewhat similar, but this one's a little bit more cambered in. Watch how flat the curbs are, other than on the right-hand side as you come down out of the S's in towards the chicane. Here's when you're on the brakes, heaviest point on the track. Avoid the anti-cut curbs. We've seen cars go airborne in the past. That's not what you want in this U uh, PM18 Indy Pro car. Just a couple of corners now, and they're flat-out commitment corners. Dirty air is going to be a factor, not as much in some of the bigger cars in the Indy car ladder, but plenty difficult as through the final corner, slightly off camera at the very bottom of it. That's a lap here at Lime Rock Park, 1.5 miles in length. And you mentioned this earlier, um, 
Josh, it is very, very quick. Lap times under 50 seconds. And even in race pace, they're continuing to run those fast lap times. Speaking of lap times, last time by Josh Green was faster than Andre Castro. Simon Sykes faster than both of them. So the race at the front is definitely wide open. So take a look at a quick replay here. Looks like a driver getting into a bit of trouble there. That's the 13 at Jeremy Clark. He goes off track and into the tire barriers. But take a look at that, Arjuna. The right rear tire ending up getting unhooked from the car. With that new, new damage model, very, very difficult to bounce off of a wall and not uh, have any damage or effect on that car. Unfortunately, Jeremy Clark's going to have to take a long, extended trip into the pit lane. Yeah, it, it's great. It, it really punishes you. And speaking of punishing, look at this lap traffic. It's a roadblock for Josh Green and for Simon Sykes. Castro is trying to find a way path, put some clean air between him and the cars, chasing him down. That's rock and rolling. Rick Sheldon, nowhere he can go. He's just getting swarmed by the top three. Take a look at how quickly they're going to put a Rick Sheldon one lap down. The top three are all battling for supremacy here in Real Racers Virtual Club. Can Andre Castro go two in a row? Can Josh Green deny it? And can Simon Sykes get another pole position and win? We saw Andre Castro do it one week ago. There's a lot riding for each of these drivers in the top three. Let's see what they can do here at the front. You're taking a look on board with Andre Castro in the number 77. They go back by another lapped machine. That was Jackson Ball, who they're going to now put two laps down. And it looks like they're going to go by yet another machine on the outside line as Andre Castro continues to lead the way. I think that was actually a replay of what we saw last time with uh, Rick Sheldon and, and the rest of the car. They're just absolute chaos. It's, oh, is that Simon Sykes that's looped it coming up through the chicane? Yes, he's Kaz. He's now three seconds off the top two cars he might come under pressure from Nikita Lastoshkin a um, big moment at the front the gap just goes from seven tenths to 4.2 seconds as Simon Sykes just gets a little bit loose coming out of turn number five there Arjuna through the chicane it ends up looping that car, not fully around, but you can see just how he just had to save it for a moment, but he lost so much momentum that that has just put him out of contention for a race win. And watch here, I believe it's the curb that unsettles the car and forces him out wide. Doesn't clip the anti-cut curb, I think, on the right-hand side, it's on the left-hand side that it really gets unsettled. Just forced wide by the curb on the right that pushes him onto the curb on the left. Really, really unfortunate, forces him back in the pack. What did I say about the butlers earlier, Josh? Well, guess what? It's the battle of the butlers on screen right now. Joe versus Max as they get going. Here comes Max to the inside, but Joe Butler is going to not give up. It's a heads up battle between the eight and the six Butler versus Butler as watching in his windshield is going to be the 13 of Jeremy Clark. Two laps down. He is not involved in this battle for position on the racetrack. Max and Joe going to go side by side again through the final corner as they race down the front straight away. It's a drag race, but grabbing that spot, he He's going to be Max Butler. I don't think Joe's done yet, Arjuna. The 13 took a peek to the outside, tried to take a run out there. Couldn't do it, but look at the gap now as Max Butler is able to get by the eight machine. Yeah, Jeremy Clark, he's two laps down, but he wants to have some fun. That's what these Tuesday night 25 minute races are all about. He'll make things interesting. I think though, we've seen that Max has got a little bit more pace, more consistency under his belt. Already has put eight tenths, almost second between him and his fellow Butler behind for ninth position. I think he should be able to clear away lap by lap as long as he doesn't make any more mistakes. Goes rally crossing through the grass. We'll see how things go for him as we watch the battle out front. One thing that you and I were kind of mentioning before we came on air, Josh, is it's a track, Lime Rock, that's had a recent update on the iRacing service. One of the tracks that was inaugurated in 2008 when iRacing first released as a public beta and eventually made a public release. Recently, a driver that's become very uh, familiar with iRacing and its competitive scene, Parker Kligerman, who now owns uh, an eNASCAR Coca-Cola iRacing Series team, he's a part owner of Lime Rock Park. I would love to be a part owner. Just give me the opportunity to go and race around this track. Is that you shooting your shot at Parker Kligerman there, Arjuna? If he wants to send me a message and let me do some laps here, yes, I I'm up for it.
There you go. Parker Kligerman, if you're watching, Regina Conkipati wants to take a couple of laps around Lime Rock Park. And well, throw me into that situation as well. I'd like to take one of these cars around Lime Rock Park. This track just seems so fun. All the elevation changes and not too long either. You're able to get a lap done in this example with the USF 2000 cars in just under 50 seconds. Everybody now on the racetrack is running about high 47 low 48 lap times but at the front it's still andre castro versus josh green but we've crossed over now arjuna under 10 minutes left in this race they go on to lap number 20 of the night and castro has held that lead since lap number three josh green the last couple of times by has been putting in a faster lap time that too is close to making a move question is when is he gonna do it when does he feel like it is his moment to do it the timing of the pass can mean everything especially at this racetrack i think you set it up out of the final corner get as close as you can use the draft you want to be to the inside going outside gives you a longer run around the corner also leaves you open to going into the grass that was self-inflicted from andre castro but gives you that indication of how hard these drivers are racing as green is in the draft and closing across the start finish line is he going to make the move? There's the defense from Andre Castro. He'll go to the inside into turn number one. Is the crossover going to work? Is the inside going to be open through two? No, it is not. Josh Green is going to be able to hold on to that second spot. No mistakes made, but he is still right on that back wing of Andre Castro. Castro now needs to try and run away. Three and a half tenths is the gap. That is not a lot, but when it comes to a shorter track like Lime Rock Park, might as well be a few seconds. He's going to have to try and regain that time back. Another great exit out of this final corner, Arjuna. Another great slipstream down the front straightaway. We could be looking at a lead change. It's going to be close. He's in the slipstream. He's gaining the time. Is Castro going to go on the defense? Yes, he is. Is the challenge going to come in from Green? He's not going to have enough momentum. Oh. He can't get side by side, but contact made and a mistake for the 77. And Andre Castro has been gone into the tires and Josh Green is going to take the lead from Lime Rock. There was definite contact there, but instigated by Castro running himself deep into the corner. I don't think if we get a replay of what happened there, it was necessarily a Green's fault. I think just Andre Castro goes deep and it kicks off a chain reaction. Here's a look at your replay all the way to the right hand side pinching himself goes deep and green tries to get the up and under and all when you watch it back from that angle it looks like potentially green could have slowed his roll just a little bit more to avoid making that contact watch on board here josh there was an apology over the iRacing radio from Andre Castro on Josh Green, but I think what we need to be talking about now, Arjuna, it looked like he might have gotten some front wing damage off of that contact. It can go either way with the blame, but an apology from the 77 of Castro to the two of Josh Green. So it sounds like no hard feelings between those two drivers, but if Green has wing damage to the front end of that race car, that could open the door back up for Simon in Sykes. The question is, is Green going to lose any lap time this time by? Remember, if the lap time isn't around the mid 47s, it is going to be slower than the average lap time for the two of Josh Green. Across the line, he is going to come this time by 47.9, but I think most notably Arjuna, Simon Sykes is keeping that gap around 4.2 seconds. It just drops to four seconds as Josh Green works his way through turn one, but there it goes, jumping right back up. Up. I don't think this is going to be an open door for Simon Sykes. There you can see that front wing damage. I don't know. I'm going to correct you, John. going to affect anything. I don't think there's much damage. I think that looks as clean as you can get given the contact that we saw. It was fairly high speed fairly committed the entry from green i think he's gotten away with one there the guy racing gods might not have smiled on andre castro who by the way has not just returned to the garage area he has left the racetrack he is not going to be returning to the track even when he gets i believe they have a fast repair so he's not going to take that he's going to finish at the tail end of this field i think josh green has gotten away with one 47 521 last time by green right back on the pace it looked like from that replay in my 
position that it did have a little bit of damage or maybe just a little bit of movement with that contact in the replay that did not actually affect the virtual race car so we'll see if anything is going to happen to that too or like you mentioned Arjuna if he kind of got away with our incident there with no damage for the two of Josh Green he's back to 47.521 last time by him Simon Sykes absolutely not in the realm of contending for this race win yet so across the line Josh Green is looking to walk away with his first win of the season the Mount Kisco New York native and road to Indy competitor is looking great at the front of the field less than five minutes to go he can't let his guard down yet Arjuna anything can happen we've seen how easy it is to make a mistake around this course especially when you're alone it bites. This racetrack bites. It's so treacherous uh, in a car like this as well, which is low to the ground, downforce dependent, requires commitment from the driver. It's one of those tracks where you need to build up the confidence. Not really much fighting, by the way, Josh, in the top five. There's a battle going on for sixth. Matthew Escajeda has closed on Nicholas Leo. It's the sixth and seventh position. The battle of the Butlers, still close. I thought that Max Butler had a bit more consistency was going to be able to p pull away from joe behind him no they're, they're just still only separated by six seven tenths of a second two battles down the field yes but valuable championship points because remember matthew escajeda is a driver that we've seen win a championship you go back to season two he won when it was in the old pro mazda car Season two champion, like you mentioned, Matthew, Matthew Escajeda in a battle with Nicholas Leo, motorsports video producer for a marketing agency. So once again, we're seeing the different jobs in motorsports, whether it's behind the wheel or talking about the drivers behind the wheel. In our case, Arjuna, everybody coming out to have fun on a Tuesday night and a race for some points here in the Real Racers Virtual Club. Three and a half minutes left on the clock for Josh Green at the front of this field. We continue on this battle between now. We're taking a look at the, another battle between the Butlers. Max Butler versus Joe Butler. Max is in front. Joe is trying to chase him back down as the six machine bobbing and weaving down the back straight as they go through turn number six. Yeah, that was close. You can see that. Joe at this point has confidence. He knows he can get the move done. Only a car length between the two of them as they come out of the final corner. It's once more car defending to the inside. Long way around for Joe Butler. Can he get it done? Photographer Max Butler versus videographer and video editor Joe Butler as they race out of turn number two and back into turn three. The door is going to be open for the eight machine on the inside. Not going to be able to take it. You're on board with Joe Butler as Matthew Escajeda and the Nicholas Leo battle is going to go the way of Escajeda. Is this battle going to go the way of Joe Butler? As they go through the chicane, it looks like an incident in front of him. I believe that that deck of cards had changed hands with Escajeda and Leo by Nicholas Leo getting involved in an incident in the chicane. That's Nicholas Leo in the 69 that is now going to be in front of the Butler battle. Let's see if we can grab the replay. Bottom corner of your screen, Nicholas Leo coming under fire. That's the mistake that he made that caused this situation, that has caused Leo to be in the position to try and defend. They're scrapping in front of Joe Butler, Max Butler trying to get past. One more look at the replay here. And it's that, that was in such an unfortunate portion of the track. He did not have a lot of room to try and get back running, but he is back running. Now still in the same position that he was after that incident happened, P7. He didn't lose any more positions than one to Escajeda, but he is now lost a ton of time and is now back in the battle between Max and Joe Butler. Here comes Max Butler back to the outside. A little bit of a door slam from the 69 of Leo, but he's going to go a little bit wide. How's this going to work? Down the hill, through the final corner and onto the front straight away. It looks like the Butlers are going to go back into it. Max Butler has to go all the way down to the inside grass as down the front straight away gives eighth position over to Joe Butler. What a slipstream and what a pass down the front straight away. Mistake from Max there. He tried to get the move Ooh. done as oh Joe Butler quick hands to hang on to that Pro Mazda, the number eight car there. But it was a mistake from Max Butler trying to get the pass done in the final corner. Got cut off by Nicholas Leo defending hard, who really covered him off to the inside late as well. Checked up the momentum of Max Butler, came under fire from Joe, and now Leo stretches his legs once more. It should be two, uh, one lap to go for these guys as they come across the line, because here comes Josh Green. No, it'll be two laps, excuse me, because Josh Green still has a lap and a half to go.
It'll be white flag this time by as the clock will go to 30 seconds. Josh Green looking for that white flag this time by. Here's the battle for eighth between Nicholas Leo, battle for seventh, excuse me, between Nicholas Leo, Joe Butler, and Max Butler. You can see how wide Joe Butler is going through Big Bend, turns one and two. He's able to keep that spot away from Max Butler as Nicholas Leo, after that incident, ended up in this battle. Neither of the Butlers were able to get by the 69. He has now prevailed and pulling away in P7. Crossing the line last time by was Josh Green. Clock goes to zero. White flag is in the air. And it'll go through the middle sector here at Lime Rock Park. Go through the chicane. Onto the back straightaway just as quickly. Be through the west bend at turn six in the downhill corner at turn seven and right back across the start finish line. Last week it was Andre Castro. We're going to go two different winners in two weeks. Josh Green is going to walk away with the checkered flag from Virtual Lime Rock Park in round number two. It was eighth place for Josh Green last time out. Not an easy race at Watkins Glen. This time around goes his way. But of course, all talk post-race in the paddock will be about that contact into turn one between Castro and Green. Will we see those two drivers clash more over the course of the rest of the season? Well, ask him in his post-race interview what his thoughts were on that contact as Max Butler gets into the grass coming through the final couple of corners at Lime Rock. Matthew Escajeda is going to end up in six. Nicholas Leo, seventh. Take a look at the defense from Max Butler on Joseph Butler. And across the line, Max Butler is going to get that eighth spot. Joe Butler in ninth as everybody celebrates that oh! turn one. And a bit of a bowling match now happening as Jeremy Clark sends the 13 into that group. But what a race and what a win for Josh Green as everybody has crossed the line. Let's take a look at your full race results for round number two of Real Racers Virtual Club. Josh Green is going to walk away with the win here tonight with Simon Sykes in P2. Nikita Lestochkin, Wade Michael, and Zach Hudson are going to round out your top five. Matthew Escajeda ends up P6. Nicholas Leo P7 with Max Butler and Joe Butler ending up eighth and ninth. Rick Sheldon is going to wind up top 10 one lap down. Jackson Ball, Jeremy Clark, and Andre Castro. What an unfortunate finish after some late race contact. Ends the 77, 13th, 11 laps down. Simon Sykes ends up setting the fastest lap, even though he ended up finishing in P2. He'll grab a bonus point for that fastest lap, as well as the pole position. It was just one spot off from grabbing the perfect night. Well, as we enter into the post-race show, Arjuna, what a race we saw here from Virtual Lime Rock Park. And what a win for Josh Green, who is going to walk away with the checkered flag and two different winners in the first two rounds of the night. Yeah, I mean, these guys put on a show. That's the reality of it. Tuesday night is entertainment night. No matter what car, no matter what track, they find a way to deliver excitement. And again, I'm going to go back to the point. Green and Castro coming together. How does that now play out in the rest of the season? We're going oval racing in seven days' time, Josh. That's going to be a, a proposition that's really going to be fascinating to see. It is going to be a completely unique and different race than what we saw at Watkins Glen and what we saw tonight at Lime Rock Park. Entering into the post-race show now, and we're going to get to talking with all of your athletes that competed here tonight, starting with Simon Sykes. It was a P2 for the number three machine tonight, and Simon, take us through, first of all, that qualifying lap, because you did end up starting on the pole, even though you got away with a second place finish. How was it grabbing that pole position and leading the field to the green flag tonight? It definitely felt uh, felt pretty good, better than last week. I had some uh, hardware issues last week that prevented me from competing, but I was able to get everything working and I uh, got a great draft off my teammate, Andre Castro. We ended up going one, two in quali uh, and I was having a really good race there. Uh, I was I dropped a third, but I knew my pace was there and knew I'd uh, have something for uh, Josh and Andre at the end. Unfortunately, uh, Andre's race ended early with that uh, incident in turn one and I uh, hit one of the curbs in the chicane. It's It catches you off guard, and I caught one of them. Managed to not spin the car, but lost just enough time to get out of that draft. 
and Josh ran a really good race at the end. I uh, tried to catch him, and we were running pretty close times, but he did a really good job holding it up for P1, and uh, pretty happy to come home P2 with a Legacy Auto Support Machine. Of course, in one week's time, a very, very different race than both Lime Rock that we had tonight and Watkins Glen one week ago at Worldwide Technology Raceway, otherwise known as Gateway. What's your confidence going into an oval? Do you think you can get another good finish there? Or do you think it's going to be an uphill battle for you and the team? Well, I certainly hope we can get a good finish. I'm pretty new to ovals in real life, but I do have some experience on iRacing, particularly in Gateway. I've run some... Uh... Run some races there, some league races. So this will be my first one with this series and uh, looking for looking for a good finish next week. Well, Simon, thank you for joining us here in the post-race show on Race Spot TV. Congratulations on your second place finish here tonight. We'll see if you can grab that win at Gateway in one week's time. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. Great to hear from your second place finish here tonight, Simon Sykes. And we continue the post-race show with Wade Michael, driver of the number seven machine. He finished P4 here tonight. And Wade, it was a good night for you. You gained two spots from where you started in P6. How was that race from your perspective down on the track? Yeah, the race was wildly entertaining. I think uh, maybe a little less wild than we all expected, I think, coming into this one. Uh, this car is so tricky to drive, and this this... This track uh, requires so much focus. It's like to be on the limit is just like you're right on the edge of the track and uh, it's so quick. Um, and I think we expected it to be a little bit more of a carnage fest than it was. But uh, yeah, from my perspective, uh, qualified well, had a good race, good scrap with Max Butler there for a while. And we just went back and looked. It looks like it was a little net code uh, that, that took him out. But uh, pleased with my race. I, I ran consistent and uh, another top five. So feeling good. And of course, with your roughly 10 years of karting experience in the real world, transitioning over to the virtual world, does that give you a little bit more confidence in the virtual world, knowing that you at least have some real world actual road course experience that you can kind of take to this track? Obviously, it's a lot different than nor normal karting tracks, and this track is a lot different than a go-kart, but does some of those things in the real world transfer over to the virtual? Yeah, I mean, the the primary things are racecraft, right? And like how to set up a pass and, and figuring out a, a track relatively quickly. But, um, you know, it's been a while since I've, I've been in a cart, unfortunately. Uh, so I'm still trying to get acclimated to, you know, really focusing forward as opposed to uh, focusing back. And specifically when Max and I were racing, I think I was a little quicker than him when I was behind. But as soon as I got out in front, I, I started to mission my reference points and really focusing too much uh, on the mirrors. So definitely one of those things I want to improve upon over the course of the year. But uh, just it feels good to have a decent, uh, consistent pace and, and to be in the top half of the grid here. Very competitive field. So that's, that's definitely uh, uh, something I'm proud of. Well, thank you very much for joining us here on Race Spot TV post race. We'll see you from the Oval at Gateway in one week's time. Congratulations on your top five. Awesome. Thanks, guys. You do such a good job. We really appreciate it. Moving forward to the post-race show, the driver who just barely nabbed the top five here tonight, it is Zach Hudson. And Zach, you started from P8. Didn't look like to be the best starting of the night for you, but top five finish, that's got to feel pretty good behind the wheel of that number nine tonight. Uh, it really does. I mean, this was a close, close field, uh, especially in qualifying. I think it was the, you know, the top 10. It was you know, just a few tenths off. So, uh, you know, it was a tough race. Uh, the track is, I mean, it, it is brutal. I mean, you literally have to be on edge every single corner. Um, and to be able to pull out a, you know, a top five today, I am, I'm completely happy with. So, uh, yeah, loving the start of this season so far. Moving forward, of course, in the calendar, we have more road courses on the horizon, Red Bull Rings, Legacy, Silverstone, Interlagos, to just name a few, but we still have a couple of ovals, two ovals to be specific, fl fluttered in there, Phoenix Raceway and Gateway, which is in one week's time. Do you think you can get, nab another top five when we go to the road course of Gateway? Or the uh, oval of I, Gateway, excuse me. Yeah, oval. Uh, yeah, I certainly hope so. You know, ovals, uh, that's my bread and butter. So uh, I'm very excited that we integrated ovals into this season. Uh, run a gateway, Phoenix. Uh, yeah, I'm super looking forward to, to next week, running some ovals and uh, yeah, having a great time. Great to hear that the confidence level is up going into the ovals, Zach. Congratulations on your top five tonight. We'll see you in hopefully in victory lane in one week's time. 
Awesome. Thank you guys so much. Hey, shout out to my uh, my good friend Hector out there watching. Appreciate the support, man. Great to hear from Zach Hudson as he finishes a great P5 here tonight. And we continue in the post-race show. One of the two butlers who were sparring for pretty much the entire last half of that race. It is Max Butler. And Max, talk about that battle you had with the eight machines tonight. That was a big heads up battle for about the entire last half of that race. And it could have went either way. It changed hands a few times. I was waiting to battle Joe for like two seasons of this thing, but we always managed to be on different parts of the racetrack at different times. So when I saw he was gaining on me and he had a lot of speed at this track, I was actually so excited uh, to like race wheel to wheel with him. And he almost got me at the line. I don't know if you guys have the cameras on the line, but uh, I made a mistake in the last corner and that boy almost got me right at the checkered. So very excited about that race, uh, just with the wheel to wheel action that I had. We did have a camera on it, and it was a photo finish at the line, but ultimately you walk away with the P8, and it's a top 10, even though it is only a 13 car grid, still nothing to slouch at with the top 10, still goes into the stat book. How is your confidence going into the remaining rounds of this race? Two rounds are down, and we still have a lot more on the horizon to go. Yeah, like you said, like one bad finish isn't the worst. Luckily in this season, uh, well, this series, we have a drop race. So um, I have a chance to stay in the championship running. So uh, I'm very confident about all the other tracks and I really love this car. I think it offers a lot of like really good challenges, especially on those cold tires. It seems like you can lose the rear like extremely fast. So I'm excited to see uh, everybody uh, start to push it for these last few races. Great to hear from you in the post race, Max. Thank you for joining us here on Race Spot TV, and hopefully we see you getting up into the podium or top five at Gateway in one week's time. Oh, no question, I'll be there. Great to hear from all the drivers in the post race show here on Race Spot TV. And Arjuna, final thoughts as we go into the Oval at Worldwide Technology Raceway in one week's time. Very, very different from what we've seen, and I think we're going to see a bit of familiar names at the front, but also some new names start to take shape. Oh, absolutely. And you, again, this is a championship where they just find a way to be entertaining. The entire field might not be fighting together, but you find these different battle packs. A battle to the line between the butlers, the battle of the butlers. Then you had the fight out front. You had the battles in the mid pack as well. Smaller field, yes, but again, remember, Josh, somehow they, went, they made it entertaining. When we go oval racing with this car as well, it's an oval that really challenges the driver. It's an egg shaped oval. It's a, get, it's a fixed setup, so it's not like any of the drivers will have found any sort of trickery to go faster than their competitors. It is one that is going to put on a show. We're expecting a very, very fun race at Worldwide Technology Raceway, and we hope that you'll join us here on Race Spot TV, January 18th, same time, same place, right here on Race Spot. Thank you for joining us here from the virtual Lime Rock Park. In just one week's time, we will go racing for round number three of the campaign from Virtual Gateway. Like I said, same time, 10, 15 p.m. Eastern time. Be right here on Race Spot to see it all happen. Thank you for all the supporters of Real Racers Virtual Club, Liberty Group, Co-Force, and the Stefan Wilson Racing Academy. For our producer tonight and my co-commentator, Arjuna Konkipati, my name is Joshua Lee. Thank you for joining us for round number two of Real Racers Virtual Club from Virtual Lime Rock. We'll see you in one week's time from Virtual Gateway. Force is a digital media marketing agency specializing in the world of motorsports. Working in a variety of racing series in North America, CoForce offers a full range of services from video production and targeted branding campaigns 
to event planning and special projects. For more information, visit www.coforce.com or find them at a race event near you.